everybody. Welcome to another edition of our Brown Bears Sports Report. I'm your host, Scott Cordishi. I'm glad you could join us. Our Brown Bears Sports Report is brought to you every week by United Healthcare. You put care into everything that you do, United Healthcare does too. United Healthcare, uh, health plans that care for you and your family every step of the way. See what care can do at uhc.com. Well, this week is this great pleasure to welcome to the Brown Bears Sports Report our men's ice hockey program. And joining us today is their head coach, Brendan Wittett. Coach Wittett, how are you? Doing well, doing well. This is uh, trying to cope uh, being at home for this long. I mean, we had a stretch there where we were able to come in the office a little bit, but uh, uh, tight quarters uh, every day with uh, two teenage girls. <laughs> So it's been interesting. <laughs> Understood. We're all dealing with the challenges. That's for sure. Well, you brought with you today three of your student athletes. Uh, first up, junior forward Tristan Crozier from Calgary, Alberta. Tristan, how are you? I'm well, thanks, Scott. Well, thank you for joining us, Tristan. Sophomore defenseman from Ridgefield, Connecticut, Luke Chris. Luke, how are you today? I'm awesome. Thank you very much for having me. Well, Luke, thanks for being our guest today and also with us, uh, sophomore forward from Toronto, Ontario, Brad Coca. Brad, how are you today? I'm great as well. Thanks for having me. Well, Brad, thank you for being with us. Coach, uh, we'll start with you. Yeah, no hockey, unfortunately, this season uh, for the Ivy League and the ECAC. It's been kind of obviously kind of tough on everyone. Uh, what have you been doing and, and uh, you know, your student athletes? Obviously, this is something that we've never been through before. No, it's been uh, it's been a it's been tough. I mean, it everybody's dealing with with uh, you know their own um, their own um, situations in terms of COVID. I mean, for us, I I really feel for the athletes. Um, it's just a hard one when um, you know you prepare and you put um, your heart and soul into something in order to uh, have the opportunity to play, and it just uh, it, it wasn't there. I mean, we tried that first term. Um, I know Tristan was, was uh, on campus that first term and, um, you know, it was just difficult. We never really got out of a certain phase where we were, were able to progress towards actual uh, uh, skills and, and then ultimately practice and, and hopefully games at that time. But, uh, you know, for, for me, um, I think it's, it's important to make sure you use your time um, that you have away from the, the rank in terms of, um, just preparing for when we do step back on campus. It's going to be a big challenge. I mean, we're, we're going to turn over a lot of players that are through graduation or, or, or guys that are, that are um, um, like, like I said, just, just uh, moving on to, to their next opportunity. And so for us, it's going to be, you know, guys have been off the ice for a long, long time. Um, I know some of the guys have the opportunity to, to, to be able to play and train um, away from campus. Um, and uh, most of the guys this term, because of, of uh, the progress that, that, that we struggled with that first term, um, have, have uh, chosen to go remote um, um, at this time. And I think um, um, from their perspective, it, it probably allows them a little more opportunity in terms of, of training and getting on the ice and, sure. and doing those, some of those things that are gonna be necessary when we're off the ice for so long, um, once we get back after it, hopefully next year. So Tristan, uh, coach had mentioned that you were on campus for the fall uh, semester. Tell us what it was like, obviously much different than anything I'm sure you ever experienced in your first couple of years here at Brown. Yeah, definitely, Scott. You know, um, it was interesting. I got there a little later, uh, end of September, kind of hoping to be able to get into the gym and then hopefully on the ice in preparation for a season. Um, but, you know, like coach would have said, it just wasn't in the cards. It's really unfortunate. I mean, COVID, um, it's, uh, it's certainly ruined, not, it's ruined a lot of people's lives and everybody's dealing with it. Um, and I mean, on campus, we were, we were doing our best to just follow the school guidelines. And, and at the end of the day, it just wasn't in the cards. So Luke, uh, coach mentioned how a lot of you are learning remotely this semester, just because maybe it does, among other things, give you a better chance to maybe train on your own. And I know we talked off the air a little bit about how, you know, Canada is going through another shutdown right now, and, and you're kind of limited to trying to find a pond to go skate on or any type of outdoor rink, right? Is that kind of uh, what you're dealing with? Uh, I'm down. I'm down in Michigan, but oh, I don't I'm sorry. Brad. I meant yeah. Brad. I, I apologize. Oh, oh, yeah, my mistake. <laughs> yeah. So Canada just got, um, well, Ontario or Toronto specifically just got another shutdown because the cases were high or something like that. So I've just been going to outdoor rinks and skating, but they they shut down Shinny. So I'm kind of just like skating around little kids. 
and <laughs> I don't know. It's the best <laughs> I can do, so I might as well do it. And then uh, recently, up at our cottage up north, there uh, we just like cleared off like a big space uh, on our lake. So I'm gonna go up there and just play, and hopefully not fall through the ice. Luke, my apologies. You are playing right now. Uh, you are playing hockey out in Michigan. Tell us what you're doing. I'm playing out in the USHL for the Muskegon Lumberjacks, and I'm fortunate enough to be able to play. And obviously, not everyone is uh, able to play this year, so I'm very, I'm very lucky and thankful that I can play, and that the league is allowing us to play games. Um, I've only been out here for a couple of weeks now. I was actually out in British Columbia but they uh, are unfortunately not playing. So I, I came down to Michigan, but I'm just lucky enough to be able to play and practice like it's a, a regular regular year out here in Michigan and uh, continue to play until either the country shuts us down or we get to finish our season. Luke, you played in all 31 games as a freshman. You scored the game tying goal at Colgate in the ECAC playoffs with a minute left to to force overtime. Does that seem like it was a long time ago when you last laced up the skates as a Brown bear? It does. Yeah. It, it definitely seems like a long time ago, especially since we thought COVID was only going to last a couple of weeks and then it kept getting pushed out longer and longer kind of seemed like the summer lasted forever, which usually wouldn't be a bad thing, but I kind of wanted to get, get back to school and everything like that, but it kept getting pushed farther and farther and it kind of seemed like time was going by pretty slowly. Tristan, uh, you led the team in, in face-off percentage last year. Uh, I guess, it, does that make you the Patrice Bergeron of the Brown Bears? <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great honor. He's a great player. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's one of the things that I've just tried to be good at my whole life, um, just these little nuances in the game. And I think face-off percentages and winning face-offs in key, key moments of the game is something that I'll keep striving towards. Well, you scored the game-winning goal at Colgate last year. As a freshman, you were third on the team in scoring. I mean, how much do you miss being out on the ice with your teammates? Tons, tons. I mean, it's um, it's really heartbreaking this year that that we can't even be together. Um, and it's it's obviously being on the ice and skating together is great, but it's also the camaraderie and the dressing room that we're all missing and that we're all deprived of right now. And so um, that's an equally important piece that is. Uh, that we're all kind of, I think, looking for and, and that we're all missing. Brad, like Luke, you played all 31 games as a freshman. In fact, you led the team with four power play goals. You scored the game winner against Princeton. Uh, what do you remember about your freshman season? I remember not, not taking it for granted, but looking back, there's it just happened so quickly. And now that it seems so far away. Like, I just wish that I would have taken advantage of almost like every single moment. Not that I didn't, but I guess you can just always look back and be like, wow, like it all just went by so fast and you don't really get a chance to like smell the roses, I guess. You know, coach, um, you've got some real good young talent, obviously on this roster in guys like Brad and Luke. And then in addition, you've got, you know, some good upperclassmen like Tristan who were a part of that nice run that you guys made to the ECACs last year. So I'm sure you're looking forward to getting back out on the ice with these guys, whenever that time might be. Well, that's the positive. I mean, I, I you know, you, you look at it from, from this team that, that uh, we were going to have together this year. Um, and I felt really good about, about the, the guys that were on that team, uh, the ability level of that team, kind of going through uh, some of the learning process of, of how to win. And uh, um, we had some very, very good uh, upperclassmen um, that I think in conjunction with the current sophomore class, um, I, I felt good about what we could do and where we could go. Um, that being said, um, we, do have a, we do have a young team. Um, you know, Tristan uh, as a junior was uh, elected captain. So this leadership ability in, in, in those, uh, in those younger classes also, and, and, uh, um, you know, Brad and, and, and Luke, um, are a big part of, uh, a very big sophomore class in terms of numbers, but more importantly, uh, a very talented class. Um, we have a, we have a big group coming in, uh, next year also. Um, so it's gonna, it'll be, it'll be interesting. Like I said, cause we're off for so long. Um, once we get back together, um, how we go about preparing to be ready to play hockey against teams that have tried to cobble out a season this year. Um, 
and that that's hard too when you turn on the TV and you see, um, you know, uh, um, the different colleges uh, in the NCAA that are that are that are playing. You know, and I know it hasn't been easy for those teams. I know there's been games that have been scrapped, but uh, um, I think that that makes it hard on the psyche a little bit. But again, I think the big thing for for us is we're in a situation where I think we have some very very good pieces. Um, we're going to have to pull it together um, once we're able to get back on campus and make sure we're ready to go um, when the puck puck drops uh, on that season. It's, it's like I said, it's not, it's not an easy thing. I think there's a lot of things we as a staff in conjunction with the players have to think about as we move into uh, hopefully next September preparing for a season. So coach, you took over as head coach of the program in 2009 and people that know you and know Brown hockey know that you're a local guy, a Rhode Island native. Uh, two questions for you. First was you played high school hockey at Mount St. Charles for the infamous Bill Belisle. What was it like playing for him in that program, which was just so dominant for so many years? It's funny you bring up uh, Coach Belisle because I was just uh, talking to my girls about Mount the other day and kind of some of the stories and, um, um, you know, that the demanding nature in a good way that uh, Coach Belisle uh, had in terms of more than anything, fundamentals and how you how you approached, uh, um, you know, your craft, I guess. And, you know, there were a lot of benefits of Mount. I mean, um, number one, um, um, the Belisles were uh, synonymous in terms of, um, um, you know, coaching and teaching and prodding and getting the best out of each player. Um, and that ultimately led to a lot of winning. Um, I played with some some very, very good hockey players. I mean, I I look back at it and, you know, this is just high school hockey on one team. I think we had 15 or 16 guys that went D1 over a two or three year span on top of guys like Matt Schneider and Gar Snow and, and uh, Keith Carney. And and uh, you go down the list. I mean, Brian Berard uh, uh, played there and, and uh, multiple guys that played in the National Hockey League um, uh, in conjunction with D1. So, you know, you were bound to get better. You played with uh, with great players. You practiced with great players. It was a high energy and high compete. And it was a very demanding environment, not for everybody. I mean, I look back, I was 14 years old. And, you know, one of the crazy stories was, uh, uh, you know, I was a freshman and on an on a outstanding hockey team. And, and uh, you know, we were going in the playoffs and, and I was on the, the practice, the practice, t- the practice line. So I got to dress for occasional games, yeah. but I practiced with varsity. And, and uh, um, it was a big thing when you're 14 years old. But uh, I remember him, um, I missed the something I didn't keep a puck in at the blue line something happened and uh you know the next thing you know he he kicked me off the ice um and I thought he told me to go home and never come back and I was 14 I went out my dad the door was always locked to the ring so nobody could get in even the brothers that ran the school nobody could come into practice my dad sees me with my bag he's like what are you doing I'm like he kicked me out of practice told me never come back and uh long story short uh Stayed home for three days. Uh, my dad gets a call from from Coach Blyle. He's like, where's your son, Ben? He's like, you, Bill, you kicked him out. You told him never come back. He's like, I didn't mean it. So I went back. Needless to say, I was I was young and I was I was uh, nervous. And, uh, you know, I, I did I did make my way back and had a great experience. But uh, being a Rhode Islander and, and uh, being a Brown guy and having the opportunity to be back at my alma mater is, is, is something I don't take lightly. Um, I love the place. I love Rhode Island. Um, you know, I, I love uh, the hockey history in the state um, and, and I love uh, where we're going with our program and what we've been able to do. Um, you know, we're, we're a program that uh, um, has been in since I've been back, has been in three uh, ECAC Final Fours. We lost in a championship game to a very good union team that won the national championship um, that next season. Um, so we, we, we've been on the cusp. Um, I think the big thing for us is just finding that consistency um, year to year. Um, and uh, that's something I thought we were building towards. We had that good run two years ago. Um, we we um, got knocked out, unfortunately, on the road uh, against Colgate um, with a young team. Um, but good good lessons, good growing uh, um, situations for our guys. And then this past year got unfortunately wiped out. And uh, looking to next year, you know, I, I again, I like I like who we have. I like what we're about. I like how we go about things. I like my staff. I have a really good staff. It's been together now um, with Coach Guerrero for five or six years has been that consistency. And then we added a, a, um, a, a new assistant in uh, uh, Jason Smith, who's got a lot of really good experience. He's a good guy, good teacher, um, and has won wherever he's been. So um, hopefully that stuff rubs off as we move forward. So you played for Coach Gaudet, obviously, here. And then you coached with him here and at Dartmouth. And I just learned this about you. I had no idea. When you were an assistant coach here, 
you were also the head men's golf coach. Is that right? I was. I don't golf. I've never <laughs> picked up a golf club. That was like back in the day. That was uh, that was the, the the salary structure was so low at that time as an assistant that they would they, you know the, the head men's golf coach. I think it was a stipend of maybe four thousand uh, dollars prior to taxes. So. Yeah, they, they made me – that would kind of went part and parcel with that second assistance job, but I, I was not a golfer. I would, They called – the boys on the team used to call me the golf chauffeur, so I used to drive the van everywhere, and it was just like – never picked up the sport. Brown uh, Dartmouth had a wonderful golf course right on campus. I just – I never found the time to pick it up. Maybe it was growing up in Riverside. I didn't know where to golf, Silver Springs. I wasn't going oh, to Rhode Island Country Club, great. I can tell you that, growing up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was a golf coach. Little known fact. That's unbelievable. Hey, Tristan, uh, you played two years in the British Columbia Hockey League before coming to Brown. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, first thing, it's a little wet. Uh, I played on Vancouver Island and it rains a lot of the winter there. So you get used to um, not seeing the sun for a few weeks on end. It's just gray. Um, but I really enjoyed my time there. Um, I had a really good coach in Mike Vandekamp and he, um, he demanded a lot of us. But he, uh, he had a good reputation for moving players along, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, Jake Harris, uh, and I were there together and, and in our last season, we, I think we, we really enjoyed playing together and we really fed off each other. And I think that some of the results, um, in the, for the team that year, um, will speak for themselves, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed my team, my time in, uh, in the BCHL. Brad, same question to you. You played in the BCHL as well. Uh, be, tell us about your experience. I played in a small town in Merritt, British Columbia. Everybody kind of has their own little idea of what it's like, but I enjoyed it a lot. It wasn't that glamorous, but uh, teammates would live like a house away from each other. You could walk to the rink. So I had a really nice like small town feeling. And we were doing really well, which helped. I'm sure like if you weren't playing well, it would suck to live there. But besides that, like our team was really close. Our coach, Joe Martin, won coach of the year in our second year there. So it was a fun time and just, I don't know, I really liked it. Luke, your father, Mark, played at Boston University and in the American Hockey League. And in fact, your brother, Chad, played at BU as well. And is he still currently in the AHL? And if so, with whom? Yeah, he's, he is. He's, uh, he's down in Rockford right now with the uh, Chicago Blackhawks organization. And there, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the AHL is about to start up sometime in February. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. A couple, uh, couple weeks now. So hockey's been in the family for, for a while, I guess. Yeah, it, it has. He's, uh, my dad made us all defensemen. Now, where did your dad grow up? I mean, I know you're in Ridgefield, Connecticut right now. Are, are you guys New England natives or where, where's your dad from? My dad's from uh, Timmins, Ontario, which is uh, pretty far north in Ontario, uh, it's a small mining town, but he grew up his whole life there. Then went down to St. Mike's, which is in, uh, I think actually where Bradley went. That's where I went to school. Yeah. Hey coach, uh, I know your counterpart at Providence college just helped coach the U S juniors to, to the world championship. Uh, what you think of that? I mean, Nate, Nate's, Nate does a good job. I mean, he's, he's um, I've known him forever. I mean, when, when we both came up at the same time in terms of assistance. I used to travel with him and, and know Nate very, very well. Um, you know, he's, he's a demanding guy. Um, he has certain ideas and certain structure that he wants with his, with his teams. And, and uh, you know, he did a, he did a fabulous job um, in conjunction with obviously the players um, and uh, the remainder of the staff, um, Teddy Donato was on that staff also. And, and uh, you know, Nate's a, a guy that I, I see around a, a lot uh, just because Rhode Island's a small state and the hockey community is a, a small world in our, in our, uh, in our state. And uh, his children play youth hockey, my children play, play youth hockey. So we overlap a lot. But, uh, um, yeah, Nate, uh, uh, I, I would say I'm surprised, but I wasn't um, just in the fact that I, I've seen what he's been able to do um, with all the programs he's been at. Um, uh, the guy's just a, a really good coach and, and uh, um, has done a good job wherever he's been. Yeah, I'm just curious, uh, you know, you see the success the United States has had at the junior level, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I went back and looked, and since 2000, maybe five, I think uh, the U.S. juniors have won five golds. 
but that doesn't necessarily translate when you get to that next level, right? And I understand, look, Canada is the dominant force on the world stage in the sport of hockey. It is their national sport. But why, why does the United States seem to have more success at the junior level, but yet, you know, it's been since 1980, right? Since the United States won an Olympic gold, for instance. Yeah, I mean, it, hockey in the, in the U.S. has grown by leaps and bounds over the last, uh, you, know, you know, 20, 25 plus years. And, and that kind of correlates with the National Hockey League in terms of expansion and where their teams expanded to. Um, and the popularity of the game. Um, the United States also was uh, very intelligent way back when they started a, um, a national uh, team um, development program out in Ann Arbor where they have um, um, the best, uh, I think it's six, 17, 18 year olds uh, that train together throughout the year. Um, and those guys by and large were the guys that will progress to the world junior team. Um, so there's, there's a lot of familiarity with those, with those um, um, players in terms of playing together growing up in terms of playing in the U.S. system. Um, I just think it's a, it's a situation where um, hockey players come from everywhere now. You know, I mean, again, uh, um, the explosion of popularity of hockey in the States, um, you know, as is, 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 is I said, is a byproduct, I think, of uh, the National Hockey League um, and where those teams have expanded, whether it be Dallas or Florida or California. And, and uh, um, you just see uh, a proliferation of, of younger players and, and players that love the game and and grow up with it. Um, so, um, and, and, and I would say too, on the other side, I mean, um, you know, from, from my perspective, um, like when we're, we're, it's interesting. Like I look at the national hockey league, like the other night, Oh, yesterday afternoon, I turn on the TV and it's the Washington Capitals playing against Pittsburgh Penguins. Well, it's two Brown alums that are playing in that game. Yep. You know, Sam Lafferty's on the Penguins and Garner Hathaway's playing for, uh, the, 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 uh, Cap the caps. So, you know, from from my perspective, like it's it's interesting to see um, those guys that that have progressed and played at the highest levels. We've had a bunch of them. I I'd say by and large, Scott, we we've done a very very good job in terms of um, the development of our, our, our players and, and giving them opportunities to showcase their their ability um, and, and to have the opportunities to play after. It's very hard to play in the National Hockey League, um, but um, I do think um, that says something for Brown. Um, for what we've been able to do, the type of players we've been able to attract, um, and, and where these guys have progressed as they've been at Brown. Yeah, and Coach, we have another Brown hockey alum that's calling the shots for the expansion Seattle Kraken. Yeah, Ricky Olchek. I played with Ricky. Um, I scored two goals in my career. He scored zero. So I was a better <laughs> offensive player than Ricky was. <laughs> Ricky was a five foot seven defenseman. I don't know if he would, would not, would not, a, not like Tory Krug, five seven. Like, Hands a stone five seven. So as I joke with him, his brother was on the Olympic team when he was 16 years old and played for years for the Chicago Blackhawks and coached in the National Hockey League. But Ricky, Ricky's a really good guy. He does a good job. He usually will speak to our team once every other year, just, you know, and, and he likes to talk. You know, he's uh, he went to Cornell Law. He, he's, uh, he's a very, very good guy and a, and a, and a good alum and a and, uh, guy that I talk to probably once every, every couple of weeks, just to say hi. Um, you know, and we, we have, a, we, we have a, a guy like that. We have Patty Kelleher and Patty didn't, didn't, uh, play a whole lot in terms of varsity hockey, but, but was a hockey player, um, that, that played JV at the time when we had JV at Brown and Patty is, uh, the executive director of USA hockey. Um, so we do have, have people that have moved on, whether it be players or management or, or, or guys like myself, they got on the coaching side that, uh, um, have had opportunities in, in hockey. And that's my hope for the guys. You know, I want them to experience, um, growth and success, um, when they're at Brown, um, you know, the beauty of Brown is you get, you get a, a, um, a world-class education while you're hopefully getting a world-class experience as a hockey player, but your opportunities are not diminished, um, just because you went to an Ivy, um, to play a sport. In fact, I'd say they're enhanced. Um, I just look at what our guys have done, where they've gone, um, and the opportunities they've had. Um, and I stack our program up there with, with almost any program in the country. Tristan, uh, what are you concentrating in here at Brown? Uh, economics. And, and, you know, obviously, I'm sure you'd like to continue your playing days once you graduate from Brown and play professionally. But beyond that, what would you like to do when you finally uh, hang up the skates? Oh, that's a great question, Scott. Um, <laughs> No, there's a couple different avenues I'd like to, or I'm, I'm uh, kind of leaning towards in, in a future career path. I think they're mostly revolved around finance. Um, but, uh, you know, I, 
as of now, it's, it's um, I want to play hockey. And I think um, I probably don't speak for myself. I'll speak for everybody else who's on this call. Uh, Luke and Brad, I'm sure they, they feel the same way. Yeah, Tristan, I asked this question of a lot of student athletes. We've done this show during the fall months as well. What do you miss most about the pre-pandemic norm, right? I mean, it's just everything's so different, right, with, with the way things have gone over the last nine to ten months. What do you miss most about, uh, you know, normal life, so to speak? Wow. Um, you know, um, I don't know if there's any one thing that I'm missing, but I just, I miss being around um, uh, friends in the Brown community, you know, um, the hockey team, we have such a tight bond, I feel, and uh, it's just something that, that none of us um, have really been able to, to be together for the past 10 months. Like I haven't seen Luke or Brad in the flesh since uh, we all left in March, which in, in my opinion is, is far too long. Luke, same question to you, you know, what do you miss most about the, the pre-pandemic norm? Yeah, uh, it's tough. I mean, obviously miss a lot of things, but I think miss, I miss just being around the, the team and being in the locker room together and, and just and bonding in there. I think we have a great time off the ice, but especially on the ice too, I just miss being around the guys. Brad, has there been anything good in your opinion that's come out of this pandemic in terms of, hey, everybody knows how to use Zoom or what have you? Uh, and, and again, same question I asked the other two guys. What do you miss most about the pre-pandemic norm? Uh, so I'll tackle the first one. If anything good? I think I realized I had a lot of bad habits, I guess, that I could just <laughs> nab in the head or try to at, at least. But I guess – People being left alone to think themselves, they could come up with some things that they need to do in their life. Could be bad, could be good for some people. Um, what do I miss? I miss just being able to just like do things in general. Just not have to wait in this long line to be five people in a store or be able to just go on the ice whenever I want. Let's say that's at Brown or just anywhere. Be able to just have freedom again, I guess. Not in like a, there's no freedom. They're locking us down. Just like being able to do what I want. That'd be nice. Yeah, I get it. Believe me. Coach, um, one thing that is happening, and I'm not sure what the timetable is, but me and auditorium is undergoing a nice renovation and it's something that these guys will certainly appreciate when it's finished because they'll have a brand new state of the art locker room space to hang out in. Yeah. That that's, you know, when you talk about positives and, and what I look forward to each week, it's, it's getting on those, those calls with um, the architects and Gil Bain and, and the people that are going to be involved in that project. So um, that project is moving forward. Um, you know, I think shoveling the ground they, they were, planning initially on, in April, I want to say it might've been moved to towards March. Um, and basically it's going to be a complete renovation of our whole locker room um, uh, structure in terms of uh, everything from a uh, new training room to, to lounge, to, to locker room, to dry rooms, to bike room, to stretching rooms, to, it'll be, it'll be taken down uh, to, um, uh, to its base and then built back up and um, the meetings have been uh, a positive and it, it, that that's something that we needed quite honestly. I mean, it's something that uh, means a great place, um, but it was built a long time ago. Um, and we just needed some, we needed some, um, some upgrades um, more so for functionality, more so for the guys wanting to um, uh, you know, be in that space and utilize that space and, and uh, um, to, to understand that it's, it's a, it's a space that uh, in our building that, that will be, more about excellence, which is what I ask of our players um, and my staff and myself. We want to be about excellence in everything we do. Um, Brown University is, um, and I think it our our facility should be reflective of that. And uh, um, thanks to um, Jack Hayes and and uh, uh, Kim and Salako and the Sports Foundation and and everybody from San Menkoff and and the alums that have so generously um, 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 donated. Um, to the president uh, making this a reality. I, I mean, I, I'm very, very appreciative, but it is interesting to be involved in, and that's something the guys can look forward to. It'll be yeah. done. I think they're planning on mid August, Scott. So gotcha. hopefully that timeline stays. And, and when the guys do come back, um, they'll be moving into a, a new facility. 
And, and look, not that your team isn't already tight knit, right? I mean, these guys, you know, love each other. They're, they're always with each other. But when you have a space like that, that they want to be in, that they want to hang out in together, we saw it in football. You know, the locker room before they did the renovation at the OMAC wasn't a place that they wanted to stay in. They they would shower, get changed, and get out of there. Whereas now the football locker room is a place where they want to hang out. They want to be together, stay together. And and I envision the same thing for you guys with the renovation at Mean. Yeah, which, I mean, the, the, we're trying to make the space obviously um, uh, useful um, and functional, but we also want to make it a place where they want to where they want to stay, whether that be the lounge to the TV to, um, you know, the area where we're going to have, a, a, you know, uh, an area for, for uh, uh, snacks and food and and uh, uh, power shakes or whatever they are. I, I mean, we're trying to make it a home, you know, and I, and I want the guys um, to want to be down there. And, and, and also, you know, it'll, it'll be nice. Okay. To be able to walk a recruit down that hallway. Um, and Brown has such a storied history in hockey. Well, it's going to be reflective. Now you're going to see it on the wall. So you're going to, you're going to understand who came before you're going to understand who, who, um, has worn that uniform. And, and I think those, those are very important in terms of a sense of history, um, sense of accomplishment that some of our players have had, whether it be playing in the national tournament, uh, winning Ivy titles, um, playing in uh, ECAC championship games. I just, I just think it's, it's going to be a space that's, that's going to be so useful in, in a lot of realms for me and my staff and our players. Coach, last question for you. I know it's been very different during the pandemic, but how has recruiting gone for you and your staff? It's been very good. You know, that, that's the one thing that the odd thing is usually in hockey, uh, when you recruit, you see games live. Um, well, the NCAA has a dead period. We can't travel anywhere. And a lot of these leagues aren't playing. I mean, some of our guys are lucky enough um, that like a guy like uh, Luke that's able to, to play junior hockey still, he's young enough. Um, so the NCAA did allow that um, this, this academic year. So for him, he's able to play games. But for us, everything's by video now. Everything's uh, 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 much different than watching it live, obviously. Um, you know, but for us, I think it's it's because we're not in the office. It's because we're able to almost focus our full attention on the recruiting aspect that I think we put together a very, very good class for not just next year, but for the future. Um, and, and both my assistants have done a very, very good job in terms of, um, you know, contact and follow ups. And um, here's what we're about and here's where we're going. And here's what we need. And do you want to be a part of it? And, and uh, um, I think. Um, by and large, more people want to say yes to Brown than, than would ever say no. Um, you know, it's just such a wonderful place. Um, you know, and the one thing I've always thought that I can do uh, well is speak passionately about what, what Brown meant to me, um, uh, my ability um, uh, to, to do what I love um, is a direct uh, result of having the opportunity to go to Brown. Well, Tristan, Luke, Brad, can't wait to see you guys back on campus and back on the ice whenever that time may be. Coach Whitted, same to you. Uh, thank you all for joining us on the Brown Bears Sports Report. We have a lot to look forward to when Brown hockey does get back on the ice. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a presentation of Learfield IMG College.